Evening everyone, welcome back to the channel. So I asked in the last video, which I did, all my beautiful gifts that I've been sent, which colouring book you'd like us to colouring, and this one won. Uh, I haven't got round to answering my comments yet, and for that I do apologise, it's been really, really hectic week and very stressful at work so far, but I will do my best to get to them. So I've already coloured one page in here and I put it on Instagram if you followed me and I just love this book and um, I was sent it by, I'm just right, just checking because I write it in the corner now, I was sent it by Katie and I'm so grateful because it's adorable. So I coloured this page and posted it on Instagram and I had a lot of comments about how I did the bricks and honestly it looks complicated but it really isn't. I had a blast colouring this page so I don't want to repeat the page again because that would be really tedious for me but I chose the Rapunzel page because when I did when I showed you it in my haul as a little girl my dad used to read every single night to me bless his heart he must have been demented <laughs> And um, it, one of the stories that he used to read to me as a little girl was Rapunzel. And if you can't sit and reduce stress and make it make you feel safe and happy and warm and fuzzy again, then, you know, why, you know, you know what I'm trying to say. It, it, it's it's going to make me feel good to do it. So the first thing I did looking at this page and thinking how are we going to tackle this together is I have used my white Faber-Castell artist pit pen here and I've just whited out the moon as much as I can I don't know if you can pick up on that there is you can see it there if I lift it up because I want to use the stamp that um, we've used in another colour along it's this little stamp and I was brought it at Christmas by the lovely Deb it comes in a little box like this and this is what it looks like it's absolutely incredible so I use, I'll get it out, <coughs> the Spectrum Noir, this is metallic pigment and I didn't tell you last time but it says quite clearly on the front, <laughs> which I missed, it says Platinum. So what we'll do is a basic stamp and then I will go over it. This stamp was £3 something on Amazon UK, I will try to link it down below. Let me just explain myself. So my burn from where I poured hot water over myself. It's a lot better, but I don't want to subject anyone to having to look at it because it is really ugly, so I'm keeping a dressing on it for the video. And then, yeah, anxiety takes over and I bit my thumb again, so I've put a plaster on that so that you don't have to look at that either. <laughs> so I'm all bandaged up and ready to go, folks. <laughs> all right, so let's get this little stamp started. This is what it looks like. Oh, there, It's just gorgeous. So I'm just putting it on there and... I had a scrap piece of paper, oh it's right over here of course it is, and I'm just checking that it comes out alright and it does. So I've just inked it up and I'm going to put this darker side of the moon over here. So it's quite a bit larger than that but that's fine, it's perfect for this picture. So I'm just putting it on, squashing it down and then I'm going to lift it straight up. It won't look anything special at the moment but um, because it's got that black moon underneath the ink needs to dry but trust me it's fabulous when it does um, if I can bring you in a little bit so you can see that a bit better you see really cool really really cool effect okay now in my other image I did because it is the night garden or night garden I did this dark sky graduating up towards a, a non-existing moon but I just made it look like there was moonlight there so I want to ensure that we do this round this moon so this page is probably well definitely going to be a combination of materials and I'm thinking prismas and black widows and some ink I hope you don't mind um, but it really adds to the fact and the reason why I should be using ink on the sky this time is because it's quicker for me on a video so you don't have to sit forever in a day watching so I'm going to bring you in and I'm going to use um, the Prisma Cloud Blue there and I'm just going to go round this moon I'm going to be careful because the ink will still be wet 
although I think it is a pigment so once it dries is it I don't know but um, I'll just give it a bit of space for the time being so I want to put that pale blue in around here I don't even know if the camera is going to pick that up it is so light but I want to stop and just reduce that glow here I want to stop me being able to go in too far with any dark just so the moon has a nice glow and I'm going to ignore those lines yeah so um, can you even see that? I don't know let me move that light a little bit is that any better? it's there but very very pale at the moment it will show up you just have to keep layering it up. It's beginning to come. Okay, so to save myself some time, you don't need to do this because I have got the pencils out to show you. I'm going to use the Distress Ink, um, Tim Holtz Distress Ink uh, prize ribbon and the little um, dowel blending sticks that you can get on Amazon. If you just put in ink blending tools, they all come up. And I've also got my trusty eyeshadow blending brush. And I number all mine so that I can keep using them. I don't have to keep throwing them away. So, as you can see, I've already used it for prize ribbon. That's the gorgeous colour that it is. I'm going to ink this one up first. I'm sorry, that was a face full of inking tool or makeup brush, wasn't it? Okay. So I've inked that up. And I've got a little um, ink pad over here. These are brilliant because then I'm not wasting ink. But it just takes off any excess. And then I can go back to it. Like that. So hopefully it will stop any splodges. And I use these because you can get in tiny spaces. So I'm just going to plop this in. We're going to go a lot darker than this. But um, it will just help me and it will look horrendous because it just will because it's Amazon paper as well it is Amazon print paper isn't it yeah but then I can go back to my ink mat and when this is dry I'm going to go over with pencils but it will just take out the the um, how difficult it is to get that really dark colour so I'm just going around those clouds I can fill the rest in with pencil there. I think they're clouds. Do you think they're clouds or part of trees? I'm not sure. Okay. So we load that up. So I want this part of the sky dark because it's furthest away from that moon. So it's going to look horrendous but you have to layer up. If you wanted a smooth ink background we could just layer it and that would work. Just go back over it. But once your pencils are on it you're not going to see that. It just, it just, let me ink some more up. It just stops it taking so so long to fill in such a big background. But yeah, so as you can see if you go back over you would get a nice smooth blend but you don't want to sit here watching me fill every tiny little bit of space in with some ink in the same colour so I love these tools because they work they really do work well with ink yep so just ignore the fact that it's blotchy it will be but like I say, because I'm using pencils, I'm not even going to try and smooth it out. That's all part of the fun. I just want to take out some of that hard work. And like I say, look at that. If you went back over it, you'd have a lovely smooth blend. I can't be bothered. And it will go through if you keep adding more and more and more, but because it's just Amazon paper but um, if you let it dry in between you'd be able to put another layer on it and you wouldn't even know 
that it was there. Right, I think I'm going to come up this side. I'm going to come up this side. And I know you're going to be thinking, oh my good gosh, Lucy, what have you done to the page? Please just trust me. Okay. I'll put some more on. And then I'm going to have a line where the ink is running out and that will help to blend our pencil colour in. Alright, a lovely hideous looking sky. Right, now it's really really important like if you're watercolouring or anything else that you allow that to dry before you do anything else. So I'm going to go off and let that completely dry and then um, we can come back and meet I don't want to keep going over it because I will go through the page but you know what it's like, keep fiddling. Um, then we'll come back up and meet and we'll do the pencil work together. So if you don't have the inks, you could do this, you could do pastel, you could do whatever background you wanted. But I do have the colours right here, ready to go over it to make that sky look gorgeous. Alright my lovely friends, I'll see you in a second. Okay, so the messy ink is dry enough now for us to go over. I've started a little bit down here and I'm going to be using Indian Throne Blue. PC208 and um, I'm just going to start colouring. Now if you were to do this by, uh, I was going to say by hand, God you'll have to excuse my brain it's very scrambled, um, without the undercolour of the um, ink we would be here forever and a day. I mean you can but I'm thinking time wise for YouTube as well. It just helps out and um, because my hands it makes a huge difference. So as you can see I'm just going over I'm not putting any pressure down. We will go back in with a darker colour in a minute to even deep to even <coughs> further deepen the colour. But you can see how quickly and easily I'm getting that nice rich colour down. There we go. And how long would it have taken us to get that without that under colour? I mean, you could use as well, the other thing you could use if you don't have inks is um, like felt tip pens or, you know, water-based markers. They are single-sided. You could use alcohol markers. I could have done that just as easily. And then just go over it. Right, okay, so that's Indian Throne Blue. I'm going to go in with Indigo Blue now. Now... In my mind, this comes, I'm going to do a little bit down here, but this comes out lighter, indigo blue, than Indian Throne Blue. It's more of a denim colour and a perfect match for this um, prized ribbon colour. So I'm going to use that for further up. And it still takes a bit of blending. You still have to have a, that little bit of patience, but... Let's go back over that. Okay, come up to this cloud now. Gently fill that in. And we'll keep going, but I want to add down the bottom here, I want to add a little bit of black PC935, and that will really deepen up that.
around the castle. And then we'll go back in with um, Indian Throne Blue. And go over all of that. I'm just doing it lightly to get to that edge of that castle. So there's quite a lot of work involved in it. Um, where have I put my pencil sharpener? And then we're going to start introducing the other colours that I've got in a minute. So I'm just going to give that one a quick sharpen. So I'm going to go back to my um, Indian Throne No. I'm going to go back to my Indigo Blue and carry on building this up. Just going over any of those splotches. Just take your time, fill it all up. I just want to do this one side with you. That one will be really dark colours. But I just want to show you how I'm going to go around this moon. And it will smooth out, folks. See how that works so well with that um, prize ribbon? Yeah, so it's been a, an incredibly, what, what day are we today? Tuesday. It's been an incredibly stressful week. I've reduced my hours um, down as, basically as far as I can afford to reduce them because I'm just not managing with tiredness and after the virus must not be named, memory issues. And that will be a permanent thing now. So I was hoping, <laughs> she says, I was hoping that I would be able to come home and do lots more videos and have lots more energy but at the moment that's not how it's worked out um, I'm coming home literally make a cup of tea and then I'm having to go to bed but I'm, I'm sure as time goes on and recovery carries on that that will get better so I'm not going to moan I'm really enjoying the fact that if I'm exhausted which I always am <laughs> I can come home and get in bed. Okay, so we'll just keep going. Okay, now let me just check which is the next colour I wanted. I think it's that one. Let's try. Yeah. <clears throat> so I'm now going to go in with um, Mediterranean Blue, which is 1022. And I'm going to start coming up here because if I then want to build up that colour, bring that dark out further, I can. But I want to start. bringing it up to our moon and as you can see it's going to take a long time and I could have put ink around here before anybody says so yes I know but not everybody has the inks and it's nice for them to be able to see that how you can achieve that background. There will be another colour going in there so but this is just so I can kind of map out my colour around where I want that moon glow. So we're coming up to where we put in that that nice glow of the moon so we'll just bring that in lightly. Yeah, so um, at the moment I'm still
still very much struggling with a si really you know, my memory is absolutely horrendous I couldn't even remember who our Prime Minister was I had to ask my husband never mind America's president I had no idea <laughs> um, my children at school are great about it okay so we need to bring in, I must have had a middle colour and I haven't got it. I must have had a middle tone. Why haven't I got it? Don't shout at me folks. Might have been that one. Yeah, we'll try that. Okay. So we're going to bring that dark up with Copenhagen Blue 906. We're going to try a bit of that. So I'm going to go back over previous bits that we've coloured so that that blend becomes more seamless. We don't want chunks of line. Oh, I don't know what I'm trying to say, folks. I don't know what I'm trying to say. So I'm bringing this up to help with the blend. <coughs> <laughs> Oh dear, I know I'm always dizzy on my on my videos, but blimey, what is going on? Um, so things like my brain is finding it hard to read. I can I can read and I know I recognise words, but I'll get to a certain word and it'll be like well, I don't know what that says. So I have to step away for a bit. And um then go back to it. It's very frustrating at school, I can tell you. So I'm trying to rush, but you can't. Not with Amazon paper, really. So. I don't, I don't like leaving it like this. It's like I haven't shown you what I'm going to do properly. So I'm going to bring this Copenhagen Blue up and round and then bring in that um, Mediterranean blue up into that sky blue sky blue light uh, yeah but it takes a long time to get that blend through when you've not used the ink as you can see okay so I'm going to come up about as far as there then I'm going to mix in the Mediterranean blue and go round the sky, round the moon with that um, sky blue light, just to give it a bit of a glow. So I'm going to go off and do that because you're going to be demented sitting here watching me get that seamless blend on there. And then this sky, this side of the sky is going to be all dark up to well here, and then we're going to add the light bits in. I hope that makes sense, folk. Otherwise, we are going to be like a ten-part video. All right, my lovely people. I'll see you in a sec. Right, folks. So I'm back, and it's the following day. I do apologise. It's just um, oh, tiredness takes over, and work, and everything else. So, um, if you remember, we went round the moon with cloud blue, that bit, and just to help blend it in, when I'd done. I used a little bit of um, Blue Violet Lake um, 1079 just to sort of blend that in it and give it a more misty look. So our sky I'm leaving alone now. We are going to have a look at the stonework in um, Rapunzel's Tower and I want to try and replicate the brickwork that I did here for you so you can see how I did it and it was with inks and prismas and surprisingly really easy. Now I don't know how easy it will be to do it on this small tower but what I've done is drawn in some, let's come in so you can see what I'm talking about, with pencil very lightly I've just drawn in some brickwork just to give me a guide. So I'm going to start with um, the inks and I'm using the little makeup sponges that I talked about so the eyeshadow applicators and I'm starting with our darkest colour which is um, Hickory Smoke and I want this side of the tower to be darker obviously because our moon is going to shed some light, not too much but some light. So I'm going to take the little tip of my 
eyeshadow applicator and make sure I've got some smoke on there, hickory smoke. And then oh, if I can get my ink little ink mat out. I've got it all over my fingers now. I'm just going to put it here, just make sure that there's not too much, not too much of it. And then what I'm going to start doing is just literally, I'm going to blob it in random areas. That, honestly folks, that's it. I'd say not too much, I've not got enough now. This side's going to be darker and anywhere there's like rubble building up. I'm going to put that in. So I'm literally just, can you see, I'm going to come out a little bit so I can get the whole castle in. So anywhere that um, I want that darker, like this, this edge here, um, I'm just literally blobbing it in. And I want that blobby look this time. So under here is going to be very dark, so we'll, we'll do that there. And then most of it will be just a little bit of pencil work over the top. It's so easy. And don't worry if you go out of those brick lines, it doesn't matter. We will put all the defining detail in. Let me just move you up. All the defining detail in with our pencils. So I'm just going to find areas that I want dark. And I want, like I say, I want that sort of blobbed in effect because it will help with our brickwork. So I'm doing dark underneath the window. Um, where else do we need any? Um, down the bottom here. So it'll be darker under here. But the more speckled it looks, the better. A little bit in there. Okay, so that's hickory smoke. Then we're going to go to our next darkest colour, which is frayed burlap. So, frayed burlap. And I'm going to do the same thing. I just hope it works on this page because the bricks on um, that, the bricks on that image are obviously a whole lot bigger. So it was easier to sort of dob colouring, if you like. Okay, so frayed burlap, where we haven't been yet, I'm going to drop that in, blob over the top of that hickory smoke, bring that up, and I definitely want this side darker, so I'm going to go up the edge of that, bring that in, so I'm just randomly dropping it in really. Um, no apart from the having a darker edge there's no sort of hard and fast guidelines I'm just blobbing it in and this sort of rough and ready look is what will add to the texture of the building and really help where else can I put a little bit of that in it's a nice colour we'll put some on that bit We'll put some frayed burlap on here. I'll try and avoid her hair, obviously. Go back over that hickory smoke. Put some up here. So any um, areas that we want especially dark, we can go back over. in there. Okay, then we get the next colour which is um, we're going to go in with um, tea dye. So this gives us a little bit more of a orange hue with the tea dye. And then again, where we haven't been, I'm going to drop it in. Get some more ink on my pad. Bring that out here. And we've got one more colour to put in. But when we do the pencil work over the top, when the ink's dry, it'll just come out like a 
sort of nice stone effect. It's very clever and very easy. And I was just playing and very relaxed while I was doing it and just thought, oh, do you know what, I'll go for it. Because what's nice about this book gives you the confidence because there's a second copy. So if you do fluff up, it doesn't matter. You can do it again. Okay, so that is tea dye. And then our final colour is pumice stone. So I'm going to do exactly the same. I'm going to ink that up. I'm going to put a little bit at the edge because this is quite dark. So I don't want too much of that. There we go. So areas that we know then that are going to be darker, I'm just going to dot that in. Just checking you can see it all. Definitely down here. And you can go back in, which I th what I think I did was sort of put just put layers on it and thought, okay, I need more dark here, I need more highlight here. Okay, so I think I want a little bit more of a lighter colour this time. So I'm going to go back in with tea dye because that sort of really gives us that brick stone effect and put some more in there. A little bit more in here. I don't want to overdo it because the pencil will take over. All right. And that, I'm going to leave at that. We've obviously got brick down here. If you can see, brick down here. But we'll cross that bridge when we come to it. So I'm just going to move all those out the way for a second. And then um, I'll talk to you while I, hopefully it will dry. I've got a selection of sort of, a selection of browns and an orange. So let me show you those. You'll have to excuse A, my fingers now are covered in ink, and my prismas because they're titchy. So I'll just have to go by number, and um, I'm afraid. So we've got um, this is goldenrod, I know that much. So we've got goldenrod 1034, we've got 935, which is burnt sienna, I think. No, it's not. Ignore me. 9, 945, 941, and 1082. I've got those. Then I've got every single one, every single one of the warm greys. So from the darkest right up to the lightest, all the warm greys. And we're just, I might not use them all, but I'm going to have them out. So all the warm greys. All right. Okay. I don't know if it'll be dry enough. Okay, what I'll do is, um, because I want to get on, I'll show you how I did the castle, because that's obviously going to be our big focal point. Um, I will go off, let it dry, and then I'll come back so we're not wasting time. But you know the pencils now, we can come just dive straight in. I'll see you in a second. Okay, I'm hoping we're dry enough now. So this is what we've got, a blotchy looking mess. Um, so what I'm going to do on the darkest parts is take a mixture of the greys and the browns and we'll just play. So I've got 90%, look at my inky fingers, it's great, 90% um, warm grey, which is 1058. And because I want this side darker, I'm going to fill in that little blemish there. And I'm going to enhance, just enhance that bit of grey there. And maybe, right, we'll do one bit at a time. Don't overly complicate yourself, Lucy. <laughs> Then I'm going to use um, chocolate 1082 and I'm going to put a bit of that in. Just really lightly this is, really lightly because you don't want to lose that sort of speckled effect. And then let's take a little bit of a medium kind of grey, so a 20% warm grey and we'll just blend that in. Okay. 
literally a little bit of grey there one bit of brick done and it, that is it really I'm just going to mix up the colours so we're going to do the same here but maybe not go so dark so let's take I don't know let's take 50% warm grey and we'll enhance that little brick that I've put in there up that edge and then we'll put in I don't know let's put in um, whatever this one is I don't know 945 sorry about my thumb 945 and um, we'll drop a little bit of that in then a little bit of a golden rod and we'll splat a bit of that in and then we'll take a pale grey let's take the lightest grey here which is 10% warm grey and splodge that in okay now I want this side of the castle lighter so I'm going to take the golden rod and we're going to enhance that splodgy bit there, we might want something a bit darker so we can take the 941 and just bring that out and then our, I'm going to use the 10% this side to just smush it in there we go um, let's have a little bit of the golden rod in here down here and we want that a bit darker so let's put in chocolate and it is just literally God, could you see that I am just literally scruffily which is part of the fun adding these different tones and then just taking the light grey to blend that and eventually the brickwork comes together so let's do another this dark bit up here so I want this quite dark here and then I'll ignore that's my phone ringing it's spam <laughs> I'm going to take um, the 945 I was doing this but I'm so sorry I'm not with it at all shut up phone um, so I want this darker there but not so dark so we'll put some goldenrod in and then smush it the technical phrase that is people will smush it with the 10% warm grey and then we can use say uh, chocolate we can use chocolate to put um, put back in brickwork here and some blemishes our brickwork back in and I'm just what I'm going to do is just literally mix up those colours so I want a more of a ready tone there so we'll put that in and that's all I did on the big bricks it's harder to show you obviously on these little ones and I did contemplate just doing a video on those bricks but I had promised people that we would do a colour along in this so that's what we're doing. Let's take a different bra a different grey. I've randomly selected, and oh, that's 20%. We've already used that. 30%. Um, Let's do a bit of 30%. <coughs> Excuse my throat. Because we want this side a bit lighter. Let's put that brickwork back in. Um, right, I want, we can use a little bit of white, let me just sharpen that, if you just feel it leaves lifting slightly, just put some, a little bit of white in there, I want that darker, on there. There we go, 
and I'm going to go in with the 90% warm grey. If there's anywhere where we feel like, I feel like I might have lost a little bit of brickwork there. And I'm just going to put it back in. A few cracks. Um, and then just mix it, just random, I'm randomly selecting, that's 20% warm grey, yeah, and I'm just randomly selecting that and blending that in. So I want her tower to look worn out, we'll put that grey around there. It's tumbling, it's all ruined down the bottom here. Minding her hair and then we can go back in even with um, that 70% we can try a bit of that to put in here which are like the supports for the building. We'll We'll go in dark there. We can put some shadow round that brickwork round the window. Darken that bit up so they stand out. Let's put a bit of shading in there. Just so it's darker. Under that roof, get that dark. We'll take 50% um, warm grey and we'll put some of that in. So it's old and falling apart. So I'm going to take that down from the top here, a little bit up there. And then we'll blend that in with 10%. Uh, okay. I'm going to take a bit of black. A bit of black. We're going to do under that. On those little. The little like roof supports, whatever they're called, I don't know. And we'll do those a different colour. So here, under here. And we can even put a bit of that black round there so that really sort of stands out. Then we can use one of our deeper colours. I'm going to use the ready, readier brown 945. Uh, oh, give me one sec. Sorry about that. That was my neighbour with an um, exciting parcel delivery. Right, so I was taking 945. And I'm just going to push out that black a little bit. But just give us that shadow. And then I'm going back in with the 90% warm grey and I'm just going to define that brickwork a little bit more. You can put a few little cracks in, little blemishes. There we are. There she is. So that is it really, it's just playing with the colours. Ooh. I've just thrown one of my pencils across the floor. I don't recommend it, look. And it's as if they're not stubby enough. <laughs> okay. So yeah, it's just playing until you get where you're happy with. 
Um, now I need to sharpen that. I don't know if it will fit in this sharpener anymore. It's getting desperate folks. That's going to need more than that. So what do you think? It's not as effective on this little... Um, it's not as effective on the little drawing as obviously the big brick work, but it works. Something a bit different, isn't it? From the usual just grey or pink. <laughs> but I do want pink in this picture. So, there she is, or that it is. So I am going to just go off and throw the rest of the colour in the ruins. So just the same as we've done the tower and then it should bring it together much better. Um, and then we'll meet back up to do the rest. I've no idea what to do with these. I was thinking silver and pink for these, but I don't know. I don't know. I really don't. We'll see. It'll probably be green. <laughs> probably be brown and green knowing me by the time I've finished. All right, lovelies. I'll see you in a second. Right, so this is how far I've got. I've coloured in the uh, castle. And I do have a plan for the vines and the castle top, those bits. Um, but before I do that, I want to, just for my own sake, you don't have to do this, but I want to add a little bit of Distress Ink to the background. Now, I'm thinking that this bit is meant to be stone here, but I don't want it be, the page to be too, too dull. So I am going to lift my keyboard up so I can move the page up so you can see. That would be helpful. <laughs> Sorry, folks. I'm thinking that this bit is supposed to be stone, but I'm going to do it in a variety of greens. Um, I want the page to be lifted. I don't want it to be too dark. And that way the castle will um, <clears throat> kind of sink into the background like this is in the forefront, like it's meant to be. So I'm going to use, I'll bring it up because I don't want to mess the camera up, Bundled Sage by Distress Ink, um, by Tim Holtz Distress Ink. Excuse my confusion, it's been a long day. Um, so this is day three of trying to film this and um, work has just been hideous, it's been awful. So I'm really looking forward to um, colouring with my friends and sharing time with you. So again, I am blotching it on and the reason I'm doing this first is because if I colour those, the colours that I want to do it, and then get ink on it, it's gonna it's gonna mess it up. So I'm gonna fill in all of these in the same colour. So this is just really for my own benefit. And if you don't have the distressed inks, you don't need to do it. Um, this is just um, helps me. And like I say, when we did the sky, it kind of fills in any white paper gaps, especially on um, Amazon print paper. But it also, on a busy page, will help me to... Um, I'm not so bothered about the vine if I get green on it, but I really don't want it on the leaves. Um, it really helps me to sort of identify bits on the page. So that's all I'm going to do, is just checking you can still see, and I'm not waffling on at you and you can't see a thing. Nothing more frustrating. <laughs> so I'm just literally going to fill that in. So I'm going to do this side quickly so I can show you how to do the... how I'm going to do the vines. And I'm very excited. Um, I haven't gone with traditional brown because I figure it will be too much and I want to steer away from that if I can because we've done the castle in the browns and greys. So I'm trying to steer away from that and lift the page to be... a a princess page. She is Rapunzel, stuck in her tower. So let me just dob this in. And then we can get straight into colouring these gorgeous vines and the roof of the tower. So I think that's it for this side. And I have a plan for around the edge too, so it's just um, having the energy after work to come on and, and and film but it's not um 
it's not difficult and in fact it relaxes me it's just being motivated you know to set the camera up and um, get chattering so I'm switching to Black Widows as I said originally but I wanted to do if we come in just slightly more so you can see those vines these are the colours that I want to use so I've got um, from all the sets I mix them all up I've I've got um, Dragon Castle, Rusty and Saffron. So they're those colours. They're really cool together. So, if we start, I don't know, where should we start? Let's start, without me shifting the camera around so I don't lose, lose you, let's start with this vine here. So I'm going to go in with my darkest colour, which is the Dragon. Is it Dragon Castle? Sorry, it's the Dragon Pencil castle colour. Okay, so I'm going to put that round the edge here and I'm switching to this side because I want this side of the page darker if you remember. So I'm going to pop that in there. We've got some tiny spaces so we won't be able to do an awful lot of blending. Now I know I said to you in the last clip I think it was, oh I'll probably end up doing them brown and green but I'm not. Okay, so I'm just going to sharpen this pencil because I was playing, I photocopied the page and was playing and did it in the normal browns. This one is rusty, so I know they are kind of brown but they're more orangey tones. Um, I did it in the normal browns but and then just experimented with this and liked this better. So I hope you do too. And I hope you don't mind switching me switching to the um, the Black Widow pencils, but they have such a beautiful range of colours. And I'm just sharpening this. And um, yeah, as Kevin pointed out in an email that he sent me as well, that um, it's really good to mix up your mediums. And I try to stick to the same for people that are following. But um, I know a lot of people have the Black Widows and um, even the sky you could you could change the colours and use the Black Widows. So this is saffron now. So this is what I'm going to do on the... Go over everything I've coloured and put that on the edge. It is nice to use me, uh, mixed medium on pages but... I do try, like I say, the reason I stick to, try to stick to one tone, or one, sorry, I'll start again, one set of pencils, is because not everybody has all the different sets, so, you know, and it only adds to their confusion if they, f and they feel they can't follow, but the way I colour most of the time, you only need a darker medium and a light and you're away, so I'll just go back over that. Any like blotchy marks? So, orangey, an orangey brown. So let's do another one together. So I want the, um, I'm just trying to find one that's clear to show you so we're not messing about. So let's do this one here. It's going to be a bit darker there because it's gone underneath that one. So I'm using um, Castle again, which is our darker colour around that leaf. Make sure I get those thorns. And then in with, I can't remember, Rusty. Can you see everything? Yes, you can. So I hope you're all well. Um, like I say, this week has just been uh, really difficult at work. So I, I thank God daily that I've got um, my colouring and you guys to come home to. I've been chatting with the lovely Emmy, um, who you'll have seen around on YouTube. I've been chatting to her through Instagram and we've made such a lovely friendship. It's so nice. Um, and lots of other people. You know, I chatted to Julie. Um, Kevin sends me emails. and So it's been so nice to make 
such wonderful friends but yeah me and Emmy chat daily and oh do you know what the friendships that I've made through YouTube were just lovely and the response I had to the email about not the email goodness me the video where I said about losing friends because I couldn't keep up due to my ill health and tiredness was it's just been incredible and thank you so much for all your support you're all so lovely right I'm going to do this one because um, I want to show you the leaves not that they're complicated at all they're not again three colors now is that branch it is now okay so this is our dark color or darkest and then switch to the next one for um, a supposed budget set um, Black Widows I say supposed budget set because by the time you've brought all the sets they're not that budget they work beautifully on Amazon paper well they work on most things but and this colour selection now is just amazing okay so I'm just going to come up there with the saffron I'm going to do um, a little bit here just checking I've got the right colours just because I want to be able to show you those leaves and um, I don't want to drag dark colour into the light colour that I'm using for the leaves so it's always best to do your um, I don't know what I'm talking about folks <laughs> I've forgotten what I was saying ignore me, it happens a lot at the moment I can't remember what I was saying anyway I want to do enough of these so that I can show you the leaves That's, I think that was my point, I can't remember now you know when I say about my memory memory issues since the dreaded flaming virus um, what I'm talking about ok and of course you can go back up go back in and deepen it up as long as you haven't pressed too hard and sort of filled up that the tube of that paper immediately you should be able to go back in right now shock horror <laughs> I've got pinks well I've got one dark purple and then I've got pinks so I've got oh, I don't need to lift it up look at that <clears throat> I've got a black widow plum pudding gorgeous color then I've got a dragon made in pink and then a cobra fancy pink so I'm going in first with plum pudding let's do this, this these bigger leaves so I can show you and I'm just lightly at the bottom putting the plum pudding in then I'm going to go over that with maiden pink if I can get you on camera I'm going over that and the plum pudding works even though it's purple it works because it's it's got a lot of pink in it and then just at the top of the leaf I'm using fancy pink like that so let's do another one so at the bottom and just literally very lightly just come up slightly one side that's all I'm doing there and then just filling that in at the bottom and you can go back in and deepen it back up making sure you've got enough colour in there and you get like a really nice tone ok let's do one more ok let's do this one shall we let's do that one so ok I'm coming up this side because I want this side of the page darker not that it will probably turn out any darker but hey ho and then our light colour and then just go back in to make sure you've got that nice blend and your colours aren't haven't been muted by the lightest colour if that makes sense there we go okay so that's our leaves now we're going to do the same I know bright pink but it it's a fairy tale castle people so I'm going to take our darkest colour which is a plum pudding I keep giving you a face full of hand don't I I'm sorry plum pudding 
and we're going to put that at the in between where these um, tiles meet like that where it would be darkest and then our maiden pink same combination exactly the same combination used in the same way but we'll use less this side of the in fact we won't even put it in we'll keep this side dark so we won't put our lightest in there <clears throat> we'll go back in because like I said I want this side darker so we'll do this one with the plum pudding like that and then we'll add our maiden pink quite fitting for this page Okay, and then we will add a little bit of our light colour here, which is fancy pink. There we go. Just so it's not such flat colour. Okay, plum pudding again. Going to darken this side. A little bit there. And then we'll put in our maiden pink keep that side dark and then on this side we'll start to use less of the plum pudding we'll still put it in to show the divides of the tiles keep that dark like that um, and we'll use more of the maiden pink and our fancy pink as we get nearer that side of the castle What do you think, folks? It's a bit different for Lucy, isn't it? It's a bit radical. <laughs> I've stepped outside the box, people. A pink roof. What the heck is going on? Okay. Plum pudding. Ignore me, like I said, it's been a long day. I actually really like it um, and the way it blends together you can get that orangey it gives us that age look to look again which I want it to because her castle is clearly a ruin um, that's what I wanted is you know to keep it sort of that aged crumbling look I'm going dark there uh, we'll put a little bit of the um, fancy pink on that side but not much it's at the top and then keep going just so you can see a little bit of colouring I might keep making it going out of focus with my pencils do I need to zoom out a bit? Yeah, maybe I'll come out slightly. Sorry folks, I've only just noticed that's happening. I do apologise. And our fancy pink. Okay. I'll try to keep it off camera while I'm doing that. Switching pencils. A little bit under there, where it's darkest. I forget that when I'm looking at this little screen it's actually clearer than clearer when you upload it than it appears on a little LCD screen um, so you don't actually when I'm, zo I'm zoomed in I'm probably zoomed in way too far and you can see without me being that close okay let's put some division in those tiles Here. We'll do underneath with the plum pudding um, round here. 
Then we'll take our maiden pink and we'll finish the roof off. So I've set myself a bit of a mammoth task now, haven't I? To colour all those vines and leaves. Before we meet back up again. Get my thumb out of the way, I do apologise. Right, so now I can see where places need darkening up, like this little bit here. I want to deepen that up, because that's like an edge of a tile. Um, put a little bit more in there. Some more under here. Like we did with the leaf. You know, when you um, blend your colours and you use the light one over the top, it kind of mutes things down a little bit. So we'll just add that plum pudding back in. There we go. I like it. It's a real shock of pink. When, when, we, when we pull the page out, you'll see just how... When I pull the camera out, sorry, from being zoomed in, you'll see just how what a shock of pink it is, and it's brilliant. Of course, you could do it the same as the castle, but got to be a bit different. So we're going to do these supports, these roof supports. I'm going to do that in dark purple that side. So just using the plum pudding, and then our. Um, Made in pink. There. Let's go a little bit of fancy pink there. There we go. Right, let's let's zoom out and have a look. There we go. So against that night sky, I think that um, excuse the camera wobble. I think the pink looks brilliant. So what I'm going to do is go off and I'm going to finish all of those vines. I might darken up one side even further, go in with a darker pencil actually. Let me see, what have I got here? I have got, what's this one? Um, which one of those two is darkest? Right, yeah, let's try that. Let's come in a minute. Let's add a fourth colour here. This is the Dragon Dungeon. So I just want to try that on that, just to deepen up that, yeah that's good, that's better, just so we get a little bit more darkness in there. Oh I think I was saying don't drag colours in wasn't I when I, when I lost the flow of what I was saying, yeah so that's why I've done dark first. If you can hear that little dog barking a minute ago, that will be my sister's little dog again. He's got a massive gob. <laughs> Very cute, but a massive gob. Yeah, that's better. So we're going to add that in. So, dungeon. Just to that edge. Just a little bit. I don't want to lose that orangey look. I like it. Sort of adds to the fairy tale theme. Yeah, so I'm putting that with those. So that's our fourth colour. So this is how far we've got. I'm loving the glow of that moon. It's very cool. Okay, I'm going to go off and do the vines and then um, we will, I'll do the ink behind this side, do those vines and then we'll meet back up, decide what we're going to do with the clouds. Yeah. Okay, I'll see you in a second, folks. Okay, my lovely friends, it's about a week later, and I'm ill again, as you can hear. I thought I'd lost the footage, and um, I've spent all this time trying to um, find it again. And so I did complete this half of the page, as I said I would in the vines, and I'm going to call it here for today. Edit this video and get it up to you, because poor old Katie brought me this book, and I've, like I said, I've done the one page in it, which was this one and then I wanted to bring you this and I'll show you how I've done the brickwork um, I'm gonna edit it get it up to you right now 
and then I'm going to carry on colouring tonight in it and get the next video up as soon as possible. If that's in a few hours then so be it but <laughs> um, I do believe that I promised I would do it and um, so yeah I've, I've spent days trying to trying to recover the footage and now I've got it I'm not going to let it go. So I'm going to let you go my lovely friends and um, I will see you very soon maybe in the next few hours. <laughs> All right thank you so much for watching and sticking with my my ridiculous rambling throughout this video. Um, so until we meet again in the next whenever, take really good care of your yourselves. Night night.